Hello, Young Math Padawans. It's Mrs. Angel with your lesson for today on how to find the midpoint of a segment in a coordinate plane. So let's say I gave you this segment over here, AB. And A and B, in this case, are what we would call endpoints, since all segments have two endpoints. I want you to try to figure out what point on the line is the midpoint of segment AB. We already have a definition of a midpoint in mind. It's the point that is directly in the middle of a segment and equidistant from the two endpoints. But how do you find that in a coordinate plane? Well, in a coordinate plane, the midpoint is the set of coordinates that are the averages of the x's and the y's. Because if you think about it, an average really means that point in between. Now, fortunately, we have a formula for this. And all we're going to do is add up the x's of our two endpoints, a and b, and divide by 2. So let's say the coordinates of a are in blue, and the coordinates of b were in pink. So all we're going to do is take the average of both. So we start by taking the x-coordinates of point a, x1, and add it to the x-coordinates of point b, x2, and divide those by 2. Then we do the exact same thing with the y's. You add the y-coordinate of point A with the y-coordinate of point B and divide by 2. And that will give you the point that is directly in between points A and B. So first we need to identify the actual coordinates of A and B. It looks like in our graph that the coordinates of A are at 1, negative 3 and the coordinates of B are at 4, 2. Now all we have to do is plug those numbers into our midpoint formula and we will have our midpoint. Now we go in and do the math. 1 plus 4 is 5, so 5 divided by 2, and negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1 divided by 2. So the midpoint here would be at 2.5 and negative 0.5. So there's a couple ways to check our work and see if it makes sense. The first thing we're going to do is actually plot that point on our segment to see if it's actually the midpoint. It does appear that these are congruent segments, that the distance from A to M is congruent to the distance from B to M. There is another way to determine that this does make sense, and it's to actually draw out all three points and see if the distance between the x's and the y's is the same. So since m is supposed to be the same distance from a and b, if I write out all three points, a, m, and b, I can actually check to see if m is the same distance. Let's start with the x's. What's the distance from 2.5 to 1? That's a distance of 1.5. Is that the same distance to point B? What's the distance from 2.5 to 4? That's also a distance of 1.5, so I know that at least when it comes down to the x-coordinates, my point M is directly between. Looking at the y-coordinates, what's the distance from negative 0.5 to negative 3? That's a distance of 2.5. And is that the same as the distance between negative 0.5 and 2? Yeah, that's a distance of 2.5. So you can kind of do this little check to make sure that that midpoint is equidistant from the endpoints A and B. So practice. The endpoints of segment CD are given. Find the coordinates of midpoint M and check that they make sense. So I went ahead and set up the formula. The average of the x's are 3 plus 7 divided by 2, and the average of the y's are negative 5 plus 9 divided by 2. Now we just have to go in and simplify. So midpoint m, let's see. That's 10 divided by 2 and 4 divided by 2. So that means the coordinates of our midpoint m are at 5 and 2 or at least that's what we think. Well, does it make sense? Well, here I've written out the coordinates of C, M, and D, and we're just gonna go in quickly and see if they're all equidistant. So what is the distance from five to three? That's a distance of two. And is that the same distance from five to seven? Yeah, so at least we know that the X is in the right spot. What's the distance from two to negative five? And that's a distance of 7. 
Is that the same as the distance from 2 to 9? Yeah. So we now have shown that the midpoint M, 5, 2, is equidistant to the points of C and D. All right, it's your turn. Go ahead and find the coordinates of midpoint M for number 2 and number 3 and see if it makes sense. How did you do? In the second half of this video, we're going to look at a little bit different of a question. What if you're given the midpoint and one of the endpoints, and you're asked to find the other endpoint? So in this example, the midpoint of segment JK is M at 2, 1, and one of the endpoints is at 1, 4. Find the other endpoint. So what does this look like? Well, essentially, this means that we have this segment here. Let's just say this is segment J and K. And we already know the coordinates of M. We know that the coordinates of M are at 2, 1. And we know the coordinates of J are at 1, 4. Basically, what we're trying to figure out here is what are the coordinates of K. What is the X and what is the Y? So there's two ways to do this. One is using the midpoint formula, and then two is kind of like my way of saying let's just use common sense. So let's go over one first. So when we look at the midpoint formula, really it's a combination of two formulas. One of the formulas allows us to find the coordinates of X, and one of them allows to find the coordinates of Y. If we were to just write that out, if I have my midpoint x is really equal to the x-coordinate of j plus the x-coordinate of k all over 2, it's a lot of x's, but these are all different x-coordinates. Now what I can do here is I can actually just substitute in what I already know. I know the x-coordinate of my midpoint is 2 because I can see that right here. I also know that the x-coordinate of endpoint j is 1 because I can see that right here. I don't know the x-coordinate of k, but now I have an equation that I can just go in and solve. I can do the same thing for the values of y. Let's just plug in what we know. We know the y-coordinate of our midpoint is 1 because we can see that right here. And we know the y-coordinate of j is 4. And we can see that right here. What we don't know is the y-coordinate of k. So now that I have these two equations, all I'm going to do is go in and solve using properties of equality. I'm going to start by multiplying both sides by 2 to get the 2 out of the denominator. And that will leave me with 4 equals... 1 plus x, and after subtracting 1 from both sides, it looks like the x-coordinate of k is 3. Same thing with our y's. Start by multiplying both sides by 2. That gives me 2 equals 4 plus y. Subtract 4 from both sides, and the y-coordinate of our endpoint is negative Two. So that means that, assuming that we did all of our math correctly, the coordinates of k are at 3 and negative 2. Well, now we ask ourselves, does this make sense? So we're just going to write out the coordinates of all three points and figure out if they are equidistant from each other. So the distance from 2 to 1 is 1 unit and the distance from 2 to 3 is also 1 unit, so that's a good sign. The distance from 1 to 4 is 3 units, and the distance from 1 to negative 2 is also 3 units, so we feel pretty good that yes, this makes sense, and the coordinates of k are at 3, negative 2. Now, if that formula didn't make sense to you, there is another way to do this, and I'd like to call it using common sense. So we know the coordinates of J are at 1, 4, and we know the coordinates of M are at 2, 1. So to find the coordinates of K, you're just going to use what we know. We know that the distance from 1 to 2 
is one unit away. In fact, more specifically, it's plus one. So that means it's going to have the same pattern or the same distance to the coordinates of k. 2 plus 1 is 3, which goes along with what we already did. Looking at the y-coordinate, the difference from 4 to 1 is a difference of minus 3. So if we repeated that pattern, 1 minus 3, well, that's negative 2, which again is what we already had. So whether you're using the formula or you're using common sense, either way, you should be able to find the endpoint if you're given the midpoint. So time for us to practice. The midpoint M and one endpoint of segment GH are given. Find the coordinates of the other endpoint and check your work. All right, so I already have my equations set up for X and Y. Now all we have to do is solve. We'll find the sides by two, and we get eight equals five plus X, subtract five from both sides, and the x value is 3. Multiply both sides by 2, and we get 6 equals negative 6 plus y. Add 6 to both sides, and the y value is 12. So, assuming all of our math is correct, we know that the coordinates of h are at 3 and 12. To check if this makes sense, I just use the midpoint formula since now I know the coordinates of g and h. And the midpoint formula does indeed show that if g is at 5, negative 6, and h is at 3, 12, the midpoint is at 4, 3. Your turn to find the coordinates of the endpoint of number 5 and number 6. How did you do? That's it for today's lesson on midpoint in a coordinate plane. I will see you next time.